My name is Joanita Nankabira, and I'm just going to continue where Jane left off and talk about one of the work we've done at the MRSs, where we've seen resurgence of malaria burden uh, in five districts of Uganda, despite sustained indoor residual spray and repeated long-lasting insect nips. Uh, this is on behalf of the IDRC team that has been previously introduced. As a background, uh, IRS was reintroduced in Uganda in 2006, and this was after, for the first time since 1960s, when it was a method of control. And the initial focus was in southwestern Uganda, around there, uh, and the spring was with pyrethroids. Uh, in 2019 to 2014, IRS was moved to northern Uganda in 10 districts, and this was with Bendio Cab, and the choice for the insecticide was because there is a known pyrethroid resistance in that area. And IRS in those 10 districts was associated with significant reductions in the malaria burden. However, resurgence was observed when IRS was uh, withdrawn. And from the withdrawal from the northern, northern districts, it was moved down to the south, to the northeastern region in 214 districts. And IRS in these districts has been with different uh, insect sites that I'll be talking about. Uh, the map shows the northern Uganda districts. The, uh, the green boundary is for the 10 districts that IRS was uh, introduced in 2009. And the purple boundary is the current places uh, or the 14 districts where IRS was moved in 2014. I'll go slow on this. So our interest is going to focus on these five district, districts in northeastern Uganda, uh, including Nago, uh, five districts in northeastern Uganda, I'll leave out the names, but I'll go slow on the curves or on the graphs. I'm just going to explain the Nagongera, the first graph. Uh, on the x-axis, x we have the duration from, two, uh, this is uh, duration in months from January 2014 all the way to July 2019. Uh, on the y-axis, we have malaria cases. And the five graphs, we have similar x and y axes. Then inside the axis, we have different color codes. The gray bar is before the introduction of IRS in this region. And then we have the yellow uh, cut lines uh, where we have IRS with Bendio Cup, uh, which was being given in this region every six months. Then there was a shift in 2016 to IRS with Actelic, and this was given uh, once every year. And in one of the districts, Dokoro, the third graph, uh, we had IRS with um, Sushima, uh, Sumi Shield as the great bar, uh, as the great bar uh, cut bar in there. And then we have the orange complete bar, that is a round of IRS. I'm going to keep these color codes and the graphs for the next presentation. So what do we observe? Prior to IRS, malaria burden in all the districts was high. And with subsequent IRS, uh, we saw significant reductions in uh, the burden of malaria. By the fourth and fifth year, we had over 85% reduction in malaria burden compared to the baseline estimates or the pre-IRS estimates. And the same graph now, I'm going to concentrate on just one district where there was a change uh, from uh, Actelic and they gave Sumi Shield. Sumi Shield is a clothianidine uh, based IRS formulation. So, what did we see? In 2019, when this was spread, we began seeing an increase in cases when we changed from Actelic to Sumi Shield in this district. All the other districts continued with IRS except for that, with Actelic, except for that district. And we saw, we began to see an increase in the number of cases in this district. And this created some interesting questions for us. So for the first objectives, we looked at uh, what is the impact of IRS in the five districts where IRS was sustained, but there was a shift from, uh, where, where there was a shift to clothianidine-based formulations. And the shift first we've seen in Dokoro was with Sumi Shield. Then in all districts, we had Fluidora Fusion in the sixth and seventh year. And we use the UMSP data that um, Jane Francis has just described so well. 
And we used mixed effect negative binomial regression models with random intercepts uh, on that data to do the analysis. So what did we have? I have the same graphs that I had shown before, uh, same axis with an extension to 2021 uh, in the durations, same on the y-axis malaria cases. And I've added a bar, cut bars to show when uh, fluidora fusion was introduced in the, in the picture. That is in 20, uh, towards the end of 2019. What do we see? In the five districts, we see an increase in the number of malaria cases. In all five districts, we see an increase in malaria cases after the shift from actelic to fluidora fusion. And this is just a summary of the five sites over the duration since IRS was initiated. Uh, the x-axis is months since IRS was initiated. The y-axis, as Jen said, we can do estimate incidents, and this is incident rate ratios. What do we observe? In the first five years, we observe significant reductions in the um, malaria burden, all the incidents overall at all sites. And then in the sixth year, we begin to see um, a loss of effectiveness of IRS, not so big, but a loss of effectiveness. Then in the last year, corresponding to the 73rd to 81st month, we see an increase in the number of the incidence of, uh, of malaria uh, compared, all this is compared to baseline. So by the seventh year, we see significant increase in the number of, uh, in the incidence of malaria across the five sites uh, compared to baseline. So from these results, we said, maybe it is something happening across Uganda. So as a second objective, we looked at the temporal changes in malaria incidence at the five sites in the sixth and the seventh year and compared it to 10 sites uh, neighboring, the, uh, neighboring these uh, IR, uh, IRS districts that were not receiving IRS. We still use the malaria uh, surveillance data and we used mixed effects uh, negative binomial regression models for this analysis. All models were adjusted for seasonal effects time and, and time varying changes in diagnostics and care seeking. So what did we observe? This graph is slightly different from what I've been shown and it includes the five sites that were receiving IRS and the, and the 10 sites that are non-IRS. So what do we have? On the x-axis, we have the duration, the last, uh, the fifth, uh, the sixth and the seventh year. On the y-axis, we have malaria cases. And the uh, yellow bars or yellow lines or slightly yellow lines are non-IRS, the 10 non-IRS districts, while the pink or turning to uh, maroon lines are the IRS districts. So in the sixth year, we see that the malaria cases are higher in the non-IRS than the IRS districts. But as we progress to the seventh year, we see a shift or a flip over, and we find that the malaria cases are higher in the IRS districts. And actually we see that in the non-IRS districts, we see a reduction. Uh, the figure or the graph on the, on the right is uh, an expansion of this, all depicting this in terms of numbers. So we see uh, the, the x-axis is the, still the duration. The y-axis is incident rate ratio. And we see lower incidence. Uh, this is now comparing IRS versus non-IRS, and then an increase in the incidence in the IRS districts. And we've extrapolated to see what is happening. And this is now limited to one of the districts to go beyond all the way to February, 2022. So this is one of the districts. This is Nagongera, uh, uh, MRC, which is in Tororo district to just see what is happening beyond the seven years of follow-up. So this includes way beyond the seven years of district to, to include data to February, 2022. Uh, the x-axis is still duration of follow-up uh, in months and years, and the y-axis is incidence, malaria incidence. Uh, and the bars we have, we still have the same color codes. Blue is actelic, green is fluidora fusion, and then the round of IRS. And this trend seems to be continuing throughout. 
as I said, this, as Jen Francis said, this information has been uh, disseminated to our Ministry of Health and action has started. So it could be explaining this small decline. However, we are yet to see what is happening beyond this period. So from this, we summarize that despite repeated IRS campaigns and LLIN distribution, a dramatic resurgence of malaria burden to pre-IRS levels was observed in the sixth and seventh year, year of IRS program in Uganda. And this was uh, corresponded to the uh, shift from organophosphate uh, to clothianidine based formulations, that is fluorora fusion and the Sumi shield I showed in Dokoro at the beginning. Uh, during the marked increase in malaria cases, we are actually observing declines in neighboring non-IRS districts. And the question is, why is this? Could it be effectiveness of IRS is declining in general, or is it a problem with the formulations? So this could be insecticide resistance, it could be limited duration of protection of the new formulations compared to what is documented. As I should say, these are questions, we don't have answers to them. Then the other one is, could it be problems with implementation of the recent rounds, the last rounds? If you've noticed, some of the rounds uh, were um, rolled out during the COVID-19 pandemic and could have created some gaps in the distribution. However, it is important to note that in this coverage in these sites was greater than 90%. So we can't comment on the actual rollout, what was happening in the field itself, but based on coverage, it was still very good. Could this be changes in mosquito biting habits? I'm happy to say that some of these questions we shall be able to answer in the very near future. Finally, could it be loss of synergistic effects of dual interventions? Uh, the IRS districts received uh, conventional nets, while the non-IRS districts received other nets, uh, the newer uh, nets. So for policy implications, we uh, recommend that continued high surveillance is essential with the rollout of interventions, and especially now, when the interventions are new. And it would be nice to quantify insecticide levels on the war surfaces to see exactly or get the explanation of what is happening with the new formulations. And we've already as, uh, communicated this to the Ministry of Health and recommended increased support for malaria case management in the IRS districts. As, a, as you saw, it is across the districts. So all IRS districts need this support. And could we also have a change in sex size formulation? Very little is known about the new uh, cloth clothianidine based formulations, but some studies, additional studies may be required. And finally, uh, could we consider newer generation LLINs in IRS districts? As I said, they received conventional IRN, uh, LLINs while the uh, non IRS uh, districts receive newer generation LLINs. And I want to acknowledge all the people that supported this work. Thank you for listening.